Hey there, welcome over here. Today I'm going to be showing you a huge grab and go breakfast meal prep. I absolutely love meal prepping these recipes for breakfast for my family because all I have to do during the week is grab something out of the refrigerator or the freezer, stick it into the microwave, and then there you go. You have the easiest breakfast to grab, eat it on the go, or just grab and eat it on the kitchen table for breakfast. But anyways, I hope you enjoy all of these recipes today and let's head to my kitchen and start cooking. We're getting kicked off with one of my husband's all-time favorite breakfast casseroles. This is loaded with so many yummy things. So to my 9 by 13 baking dish, I sprayed it with plenty of nonstick spray. And in this little bowl, I have 28 ounces of these frozen cubed hash browns with peppers and onions. I did thaw them so they are no longer frozen. I added them to my baking dish and now I'm going to be adding about 16 ounces of diced ham. You could use sausage, cooked ground sausage, you could use cooked crumbled bacon for this recipe but we really like to use ham so that's why we used ham. On top of the ham I'm going to be sprinkling two cups of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. I'm going to set this to the side and now we're going to begin on the eggs. So in this bowl I'm cracking 12 eggs. Now that all of my eggs are cracked in the bowl, I just added a half a cup of milk with a little dash of salt and pepper. I decided to keep the seasonings pretty simple, but if you wanted to add cayenne or any other seasonings you would like to, you certainly can at this point. After I whisked this all together, you're going to pour it on top of the rest of the casserole that we're making up in the 9 by 13 baking dish, and then you are going to stir everything to combine. This will bake in a preheated oven to 375 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes or until the center is set. Once it's out of the oven like this, you can enjoy it how it is, but what I typically like to do when I meal prep this casserole is let it cool completely down and then cut it into serving size pieces once it has cooled. And then I always like to stick it in a gallon size Ziploc bag and then I label the Ziploc bag of when I made it and then what is in the bag to reheat this casserole casserole after I place it in the refrigerator or the freezer. I just stick one of the serving size pieces on a plate and then microwave it. If you know me, you know how much I love making baked oatmeal. It is so easy to throw together and it's such a hearty meal. So to begin, I'm adding two cups of old fashioned oats to this medium sized bowl, along with a teaspoon of baking powder and cinnamon, and then just a little dash of salt. You're going to mix this all together. Now that we mixed all of our dry ingredients together, I'm going to be adding in the remainder of our ingredients now. So just a fourth a cup of maple syrup, two cups of milk. I used regular whole milk, but you could use almond milk as a substitute or really any type of milk you like. One cracked egg, one mashed banana, two tablespoons of coconut oil, and then just a couple teaspoons of vanilla extract. Go ahead and mix this to combine. To my smaller baking dish, or you can use an 8x8 baking dish, I sprayed it with plenty of nonstick spray, and then I added the oat mixture in there. You could keep this how it is and go ahead and bake this in your oven, but I wanted to add a little pizzazz on this particular day, so I added a fourth a cup of dark chocolate chips with one sliced banana and a few sliced up strawberries to go on top. You could keep it how it is plain, like I said though, but I just wanted to add some fun on this day. This will go in a preheated oven to 375 degrees for about 50 minutes. Here it is out of the oven. I let it cool completely before cutting it and placing it in a large gallon size Ziploc bag. If I don't eat this within a few days of keeping it in the refrigerator, I just place it in my freezer at that point. And then how I choose to rewarm this is putting it on a plate or in a bowl, putting it in the microwave for a minute or so until it warms up. And then after it's out of the microwave, I drizzle maple syrup over the top and then pour a little milk on it. And it is seriously so, so good and it's a great way to meal prep. 
These breakfast sandwiches are perfect if you have to drive a little ways in the morning time because all you have to do is warm them up and then there you go. So I'm just cracking 12 eggs into this bowl and then you'll add a few tablespoons of milk with a dash of salt and pepper. Whisk this all together. I'm choosing to mix it together with an electric mixer, but you could just use a whisk. I'm pulling out my 9x13 baking dish and then generously spraying it with non-stick spray. You definitely want to do that to ensure that the egg doesn't stick, but after I pour the egg mixture in there, this is gonna bake on 325 degrees for about 18 to 22 minutes or until the egg sets. So while that's in the oven, I'm just going to pour form a pound of some sausage into little sausage patties. You could use pre-cooked sausage for this recipe if that's what you prefer, but my family just really likes this Jimmy Dean sausage. Over to my stove, I'm going to be adding my nine sausage patties that we just formed. You're gonna to wanna to cook these sausage patties for a few minutes on each side, and then once they have cooked through, just remove them to a separate plate lined with paper towels. After my egg was out of the oven and my sausages were through cooking, I let those two cool completely down before I formed them into sandwiches. So I just open up an English muffin, place a slice of cheese in the middle, and then the egg, and then the sausage, and then the other piece of English muffin on top. That's all you really have to do for these breakfast sandwiches. And here are my nine breakfast sandwiches. The way I like to keep my breakfast sandwiches is I put a little bit of cling wrap on the countertop, put a breakfast sandwich in the center, and then tightly wrap it in that cling wrap. And then after that, I place all of the breakfast sandwiches in a large gallon size Ziploc bag. And then I either place this in the refrigerator or freezer, depending on how long it'll take for us to eat it. I like to just place these breakfast sandwiches on a plate and then microwave them until they're warm. Now we're going to go ahead and make these sheet pan pancakes. These are seriously so much fun. I don't make pancakes any other way now. To begin in this medium sized bowl, I'm adding four cups of Bisquick, two cups of milk, and four eggs. Mix this all together to combine. Since these are sheet pan pancakes, you will want a sheet pan, so here's mine. I am generously spraying it with nonstick spray because you don't want your pancakes to stick. And then you'll pour that pancake batter on top. You could either bake this in your oven just like this after you spread the pancake mix out evenly. But what I sometimes like to do is add fresh fruit on top to give it extra flavor, or you could add chocolate chips, really whatever you like. But after you're finished adding whatever toppings you like on top, Bake this on 425 degrees for about 15 minutes or until they are golden brown like this. Of course, I did let these cool completely before I placed them in my large bag. I know a lot of kiddos like to eat pancakes every single day for breakfast, so this is the easiest way to make a bunch of pancakes ahead of time, and then you could just warm this up in the microwave, air fryer, however you wanna warm them up for breakfast. Now we're making a bunch of breakfast burritos and we're making them as quick as possible. So I have my sheet pan, I placed my wire rack on top of it. If you don't have a wire rack, that's totally fine. You could do without it. And then I just have my pack of bacon. I'm just going to be lining the bacon up on top of the rack on my sheet pan. And this is gonna go in the oven to bake on 400 degrees for about 18 to 25 minutes or until your bacon is to the crispness that you like it to be. While that bacon's in the oven, I'm going to start on the potatoes, the hash browns. So in my air fryer, I sprayed it with nonstick spray and I'm doing this in batches, just adding some of the hash browns in each batch. I did spray more oil spray on top and then sprinkled these hash browns with salt and pepper. I put these in my air fryer on 350 degrees for about seven minutes. After those seven minutes, I pulled them out and then gave them a stir and then cooked them for an additional seven minutes. When
Whenever I want to make a bunch of scrambled eggs at once, I typically like to do them in the oven. I just find they come out so, so good like that. And then I could kind of forget about them from time to time. So in my bowl, I cracked 12 eggs, added a fourth a cup of milk and a dash of salt and pepper. Whisk this all together. I have my baking dish. You could either pour a couple tablespoons of melted butter on the bottom of it or oil, but I chose to do just some oil spray so it doesn't stick. I poured the egg mixture right in the center. This is gonna bake on 350 for about 10 minutes. After those 10 minutes, I pulled it out of the oven and you're going to scrape the bottom and the sides with a spatula and then place this back in the oven for an additional five to seven minutes and just keep pulling the eggs out until they form into scrambled eggs like this. I like to keep my burrito assembly really, really simple just because if somebody wants to add peppers in the end when they warm up their burrito for breakfast or salsa, they certainly can, but I like to make them plain in the beginning. Just cheese, the bacon, hash browns, and the egg. I do also want to mention I did let everything completely cool down before I assembled these into burritos. You'll just find best results when you do that. Here are my burritos, just like with the breakfast sandwiches, I wrapped them in clean wrap and then I'm going to place them in a large gallon sized Ziploc bag. I always find that they stay best when I do that. But anyways, these burritos are so, so hearty. They'll leave you full for hours and they're really easy to reheat when you wanna eat one in the morning. I hope you enjoyed this video today and as always, if you're new here, I'd absolutely love to have you. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video and I'll see you in Friday's video. Bye for now.